Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell Technologies World 2018. Brought to you by Dell EMC and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE. We are live at day one of Dell Technologies World in Las Vegas. I'm Lisa Martin with Dave Vellante and we are joined by two guests. We have Shannon Champion, Product Marketing of HCI at Dell EMC and we have customer from Celtic Manor, Chris Stanley, IT Manager. Hey Chris, Hi. welcome to theCUBE you guys. Thank you, thank you very much. And we just have timed this perfect music <laughs> intro for they you. Knew, they knew, <laughs> So Chris, Celtic Manor, you're based in Wales. Talk to us about Celtic Manor, what it is that you do before we talk, start talking about your IT and digital transformations. Yeah, sure, so uh, we're a collection of hotels, of four in South Wales. Um, within that four there is a resort hotel uh, with a conference center. Um, we offer lots of facilities to our guests, uh, golf courses, spas, uh, all the niceties, bars, restaurants, um, and as well as the conference business being quite a big side of that. Um, and we've got a lot of growth coming on with new hotels and a new convention center. Um, yeah, and we've got a staff of around about 1,000 at the moment, half of those being PC end users, and a small IT team of eight supporting all those people. So. So a lot of locations, a lot of stuff, a lot of data. Talk to us about what you're doing with Dell EMC. Where did you start from infrastructure-wise, and where are you now? Infrastructure-wise, we've, we've been a, a Dell partner probably since 2014. Um, that was, we were the previous vendor before and are now a Dell EMC house. Always good news, eh? <laughs> and um, our VxRail journey is, has begun probably the last eight months with a new com uh, convention center opening, which is an international one, International Convention Center Wales. Um, a joint venture with the Welsh government there. Um, and it's something that's, uh, whereas we've got a lot of conference business, now we do very well at it, we, um, we have to turn away a lot of conference business because we're not big enough. So um, this facility can offer up to uh, 4,000 people in the main room, 1,500 seater auditorium, as well as other breakout rooms. So sort of 6,000, uh, potential guests on site. Um, and we needed some technology to support that. Um, so we engaged with Dell EMC and uh, VxRail was our choice. We briefly evaluated others, um, but Dell EMC was, we had a proven pass within a great support and strategic partnership, so it was an easy decision. So we're going to get into sort of the details there, but Shannon, let me bring you into the conversation. Last time, we really spent any time together was in the 14G launch. You helped orchestrate a lot of the messaging of that, so give us the update on you know, HCI and, and VxRail, and did, the, did that awesome marketing package <laughs> that you put together, or is it living up in, to the marketplace? <laughs> well, thank you for that softball, Dave, yes. Um, yeah, so in November we were talking um, to you about HCI on 14th generation PowerEdge servers and how PowerEdge is really designed with software-defined storage in mind and how that really set itself up well for HCI. And what it does is open up doors to being applicable for even more mainstream workloads and applications because of the power and the predictability that that provides and Celtic Manor is a perfect example of that um, in terms of uh, initially using VxRail to scale quickly and reliably um, for a majority of their workloads and applications actually, um, and, and now are moving to VDI, where historically VDI has really been the entry point for HCI, mm. <laughs> um, so it's really exciting to see that uh, sort of flip-flop um, use right. case here. It was like the obligatory work, workload or use case, right? Like to be different. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, your business is different, right? I mean, yes. I, I wonder if you could start with some of the uh, business drivers, right? I mean, obviously, uh, you know, very competitive industry, but you've got some unique differentiators, right? The experiences that you're offering cus customers are somewhat different. Um, but what, what's driving your business? Speed? digital disruption, maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Um, organizational growth was a, a key one. Uh, with, with new hotels and conference centers coming on, we were bursting at the seams in our, with our current environment. Good problem. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, all very good. But it was supporting that for customers going forward and as well as our staff, um, supporting with the systems and reliability that we can um, to ensure that we get the businesses doing you know, its, its utmost. Um, 
and then yeah, go, going on from there, we've uh, we offer all these different kind of facilities on site, um, golf, uh, bedroom spas, all needing different systems from booking systems through to your VoIP systems, your um, big databases, Oracle databases on these on these servers. So uh, quite a hard workload on them, um, and we're looking for the something that was easy for us to manage, um, you know, minimalistic going forward. So Chris, in terms of, of IT transformation, Michael Dell talked this morning about you know, these four transformative elements that a company should take to be successful. Digital, IT, workforce, security. Talking about the opportunity for IT innovation to really convert IT into a profit center. And, and where IT innovation is successful is where customers are looking at it as a business strategy. Talk to us about the stakeholders, maybe from the CFO's perspective of, hey, we have a great opportunity here to capture more business and to be more competitive. What was that conversation like, the IT folks to the CFO to get budget and approval to help transform? Always a tough, <laughs> a tough uh, conversation. Um, going from the, the past experience where we'd uh, initially gone with a converged solution back in 2014 with Dell, we that alone set, sent, saved us a significant amount of money just in power alone, so it was something that paid for itself. So the CFO was already like, all right guys. Yeah, you, you know what you're doing, so yeah. And so um, we took that, we could see where we were, our pain points were in the, in the environment that we currently had, um, and with it, all the additional um, hotels, conference centers coming on, we, uh, we were at a, a key stage where we needed to, from the core, um, build outwards, so VxRail was, uh, an obvious choice, I should say, in the end. Um, but it was, it was key to transformation because it, it enables us now to look at other methods. Um, it's freed up a lot of time for IT staff. So we're looking at um, in deploying a virtual desktop solution now, which we don't, currently don't have. Um, and that could be initially from anything up to 300 virtual desktops. So big load, but we now have the core capacity there to do it. Um, and we're looking at other uh, things for our guests where we can give them a better experience. So um, artificial intelligence, AI is very big on the agenda. So we look at um, everything from, there's face recognition systems now that can recognize the guests when they come in, ping a message. Um, we haven't deployed these yet, we're, we're still looking at them. Um, but it, it's enabled us to, to look at these now with, that, with the power behind us of the 14G servers. So it's all, um, it's, it's a key enabler for us, the, the VxRail solution. Opening up the potential for emerging technologies, artificial intelligence, machine learning. Yes, very much so, so yeah. Shannon, how do you differentiate from your HCI competition? What are some of the touch points there? Well, from a VMware focus perspective, um, you know, Celtic Manor has deployed VxRail um, our differentiator is that we're the only provider through our strategically aligned business relationship that is jointly engineered with VMware. And so what that means from a customer point of view is a more seamless experience, right? Familiar tools that they already know and love that they use day to day from a VMware perspective for day to day management, but then also the automation uh, that's built in, right? Automated deployment, um, a ability to upgrade with one click, seamless process to scale quickly when you have new hotels coming online, for example, um, and then have a single point of support. So we take one single call, whether it's hardware or software for VxRail, if there's an issue, call Dell EMC, and a lot of customers find a lot of value in that. So, okay, Chris, now I got to ask you. So you heard uh, that from, from Dell EMC, uh, um, but a lot of companies could, would say, well, we get along great with VMware, we get the SDKs early, yeah, those guys overplay all that stuff. What, from your perspective, how important is what Shannon just laid out, and and is it and how real is it? It's very real. Um, Shannon basically covered yeah as all those points there were literally what we were um, struggling with. We had when we, the one support uh, telephone come to call um, imperative to us. We've been ringing in the past. We'd be ringing SAN storage. We ring in ESX, VMware, all blaming each other and. You know, you're going from back and forth, and you're wasting key time um, with one support number. Now we, you know, you one call, you've got a one-stop shop to sort it. Um, so that was a big, big uh, call for us. The 14G servers as well. We've, you've also get the recover points, which enables us to um, have two environments where we can lose one in, in one total environment loss, but still operate as a business. So 
that all of these are keeping giving us up times to close to 100 percent as we can. Have you have you had to test that yet? Or I mean, when I say test, I mean has it actually? Have you had to fail over? I mean, you probably tested. Hopefully, you've tested it. But we've we've we have. Has it tested you yet? I mean, it, it always <laughs> tests me. Yeah, we've um, we've we've have failed over servers. We haven't failed over a whole cluster because it's uh, one of the things you hope you would never have to do. Uh, <laughs> We've uh, we tested between nodes as you as you would, um, and there is and we have tested recently with um, the recover point software where we have lost servers and it's a decision then do we try and troubleshoot the problem or do we just go back a few minutes when it was working and hit keep running yeah, and yeah. we just we gave it an hour to sort it out it was impacting so we just rolled back and as if it was. It worked. Never happened yeah <laughs> that, which was a, a nice uh, yeah reformation that what we did was right. Yeah. So Shannon, you talked about uh, resiliency, um, speed. There was an analyst report recently that, that I'd like you to kind of enlighten us on and kind of look at one of the things Chris said in terms of getting, um, getting back to the business cost savings. How does Celtic Manor's achievements so far kind of align with what you're seeing in terms of customers being able to leverage HCI to, to be more budget friendly? Yeah, so, um, I think you're referring to our IT maturity um, study. Um, and what we're seeing is that the majority of customers, all, almost all of them are telling us um, that if they don't transform in their industry, then they'll no longer be competitive. So I think all of our customers are kind of coming to that realization. That one of the uh, key aspects to that is that a year ago when we asked the same question, um, a significant lower number was, was mentioned. So I think it, that just speaks to the speed and the urgency that customers are coming to the realization that it's really important to transform and we need to do it um, sooner rather than later. Um, we have a lot of proof points around VxRail particularly in terms of the automation, you know, 73% faster to deploy. That means value to customers. That's money uh, that they're saving directly. Um, and lower serviceability costs overall, over 40% lower. So, you know, that translates into real TCO, goes back to the CFO, you know, that helps them, you know, understand the investment that they're making, uh, lets them reprioritize in other areas of the business that helps them transform and stay innovative in their industry. Well, I want to follow up on that last point that Shannon just made. And a lot of times, when you're bringing in some kind of consolidation, the, the, the staff says, uh-oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that means I'm going to lose my job because I'm really good at, provisioning lawns or whatever it is. Yeah. How did you address that? Was, was there organizational tension? What'd you do with the time that was freed up? Yeah, I think it, it's helped transform the IT team. If, if anything, we, um, it's, it's freed up time, but that time is now taken, it's given us more time to look at innovative um, products and going forwards. Um, there is, our staff are tending to specialize more as opposed to generalize, which is nice. Um, as in the VxRail is sat there and it's it's pretty much doing what you would do with minimal amount of uh, watching over. And with the remote support who also, also watch your environment if you enable it, so, you know, if you have any outages, they can potentially draw your attention to it before you even know. So um, lots of times we've freed up and now we, you can see the, the staff are embracing it. They're, um, they're, they're happy that they've got this additional time now not to be doing the not so important stuff as we, as we say, although it is very important and to keep you going. But they have more time now to to specialize in what they, you know, mostly enjoy. So, it's it's brought it on full circle now. So we're really, yeah, we're really seeing some positive. And hang out with their families on the weekends. Yeah. Yeah. Or play golf or go to the spa. Yeah. Or play, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, do the so since they're not doing that and they have more time now to, to innovate, where are you on this data center modernization journey? And and where are you? We talked about VDI, but where, where do you think you are in that journey? With respect with VDI, we are imminently doing it. We we finished deploying the the second VxRail cluster, the uh, five S-series nodes, probably only a couple of weeks ago, um, after, after a full migration of all the existing VMs. So it's, it's now enabling us now to look at VDI, which ironically when I get back, the week I get back, we have a meeting with Dell EMC on, do we need another node, and, you know, an all flash, or do we, we have spec within our five nodes some um, capacity for uh, virtual desktop. But it's, it's again something that uh, we, with all these other additional hotels coming on and the conference centers, virtual desktop is the way to go. Even centralizing the data more so people aren't taking all data off of their laptops so we're in a more secure environment. So again, a great enabler for us and 
finally, after about four or five years, I get, get there to virtual desktop. Done it the other way around, but... Do you golf? I used to golf a lot. Okay. Um, yeah. So you know what a mulligan is. Yeah. So if you had a mulligan, what would you do differently? Um, what would I do differently? Good question. Um, I mean specific to this project. <laughs> um, nothing really. I, I think everything pretty much has been done as I would expect. It was when we first deployed the uh, conference center, the new conference center environment, it was a bit disjointed, but it, because the conference center isn't, or wasn't built and in full use, it, it kind, of give, kind of gave some time to, to test um, the environment fully, um, and we, which we also did with the Dell VxRail test drives, which I know the guys offer you where you can go in and to a classroom kind of facility for a day and see it in action before you actually purchase and use it. Same question, different spin. A advice for your peers, that because obviously you had some successes, what would you tell them to be successful? Just go for it, if, 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 you, if you're thinking it. I mean, it is, as far as I can see, it is the f a future product and it's not going to go in any other direction. Um, the management side of things is far more simplistic than what everything is, you know, else that we've experienced in the past. Um, and it's baked in with VMware, so, you know, you have the best chef with the best ingredients doing the best thing as opposed to an, another chef taking the best ingredients and trying to do something. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's just seamless integration now and it gives us a lot of confidence that, you know, we have everything there with Dell and this, in, this uh, environment that, you know, to go, to go forward and grow even bigger as a business. And then we've cued your outro music. Perfect. Find that perfectly. <laughs> Chris, thank you so much for sharing what thank you're doing at Celtic Manor to innovate, Thanks. making your IT transformation real. Shannon, thank you for sharing what's new with HCI. Dave, thank you for sharing me, with me the word mulligan. I just looked it up. In case you don't know what a mulligan is, it is an extra stroke allowed after a poor golf shot. I'd probably be like the mulligan queen. You can get a few. <laughs> we want to thank you for watching the queue. We are live on day one of Dell Technologies World. I'm Lisa Martin with Dave Vellante. Stick around, we'll be right back after a short break.